Hello and welcome to my friend's garage. In this video I'm going to show you how to build your own pressure test so that you can diagnose a boost leak. The car behind me, this white car, is a 2004 WRX. I thought I had a boost leak. It turned out to be something different, but I did uh, learn how to pressure test the car. Before we jump into the pressure test, it's important to make sure it's not something easy like a loose hose clamp between the turbo and intercooler or intercooler and intake manifold. It could also be something to do with your boost controller. I'll put more information on how to check these things at the end of the video if you have not checked for them yet. If you have, let's proceed to the pressure test. You need to buy some caps so that you can seal off different parts of the intake. And so I bought a bunch of them because I didn't know exactly what sizes I would need. Three eighths and, and half inch, I believe, is what I use the most of. A Just a PVC cap here. You can see it says two inch there. And then you can see that I also have an MPT fitting that's screwed in here. And this is just so that I can regulate the pressure even more precisely at the intake manifold. All right, so in order to pressurize the intake system, we need to remove this part of the intake system. So if you have a factory air box, it'll be a slightly different, but the idea is still the same. We need to find a place where we can introduce air into the system, and that's what I'm doing now. Remove my cone filter. Next thing I'm gonna do is undo loosen this here so I can take this section of the, if you have an aftermarket intake like this, you can take this section out. Okay, now that this is loose and I got the bolt out of the bottom, I'm gonna pull this out. I have my two inch PVC cap here, so I'm just gonna put this, slide this in. You can see I've wrapped tape around this to get it the right diameter, just so it fits snugly in here. Once that, that's in, I'd probably slide it a little bit further in, but I'm just doing this for a demo here. You tighten that up. So now we need to block off all of our ports. So the first one is here, and this is going to the boost controller. This one uses a 3 8 inch inner diameter plug there. So just plug it like that. The second one is here, and this is from like the evaporative purge valve deal. Um, so that one. We'll pull that one off. That's This one's the same size as this one. It's also going to be a 3 8 cap. The third one is, if you were to follow this crossover pipe on the intercooler, this comes down and goes back into the turbo inlet down there. Best way to do this one is just to pull this off. And I just put a bolt in this one. That also lets this system breathe because um, when air is coming into the system, it goes into the engine, and if it goes past the pistons, it'll go down into the crankcase. By pulling this off, you allow the crankcase to not build up pressure because this is connected to here, the valve cover, top of the valve cover on this side, and then on this side, the valve cover on the driver's side. And so that's allowing the engine to breathe. You won't be trapping air inside the engine and blow out a seal, like a front or rear cam seal. So it's good to pull this off and cap this one with a bolt. Let's see if I can find a... That's a little small, but you get the idea. It would plug it there. And then the fourth one you see is right here by the turbo. You can see it there, I've pulled the hose off, and that's a half inch. Three eighths, three eighths, I cap this one at the other end, and then that one is half inch. Now at this point we're getting close. We have the turbo inlet sealed off, so that's good. Um, we've also, when we pulled this hose off, we, we're now allowing the crankcase to breathe. The other thing you want to do is open the oil cap before you introduce any air pressure because that also goes down to, um, that will allow air pressure to escape from the engine. And again, so you prevent having some sort of seal blowout. 
That would be the worst case situation, have a cam seal blowout or something like that. Now we're just about ready to introduce air to the system. And again, if you have a compressor, you know, you could hook this baby right up. But I would be a little weary of that because on a big tank or even a smaller tank, it may be hard to regulate the pressure. One thing that we did was, and this is just so that I can regulate the pressure even more precisely at the, um, at the intake manifold. So I'll show you how that goes on. So take our pressure regulator, hook it on here, got that on, and then you'll introduce pressure here. All right, so now you can see, well, you can see I broke this, I just dropped it. Filming and doing this stuff at the same time is not easy. But you can see I have a pressure regulator here right at before air comes into the turbo inlet. So my recommendation would be start slow, three, four, five PSI, and see if you can hear where your air pressure is coming out. Once you hear it whistling or escaping somewhere, that will be your boost leak. Okay, so this part of the video is for folks who want some extra guidance with checking for loose hose clamps or if you think that your boost controller may be an issue because you're only hitting seven or eight psi of boost i'll first talk about checking for loose hose clamps and then i'll talk about the boost controller all right so we have the intake system here the cone filter air comes in the cone filter passes by the mass airflow sensor comes in and then it goes underneath the intake manifold here and goes back to the turbo. The air gets compressed in the turbo and goes in to the intercooler. And then after it leaves the intercooler, you can see this, this uh, what do you call that? You call that a hose. <laughs> From there, it comes in and you can see we have two intake runners this way and two that way. So the air comes in and goes down into the engine. So when you have a boost leak, it could be anywhere in this system, you can see that really the air isn't compressed until it leaves the turbo here. So as it comes in here, it's not under pressure. Once it leaves the turbo, it's pressurized. So most likely any boost leak you're gonna have will be between the turbo and the intercooler or the intercooler and the intake manifold. So what would that mean? That would mean that the hoses that connect the turbo to the intercooler could have a tear or a rip or a hole in them, or maybe this isn't, one of these clamps isn't secure or one of the clamps behind the intercooler isn't secure. That's all possible. You may also have an issue with your blow off valve or um, what do they call this? A BPV, which is bypass pressure valve you may have a leak in this system. So you can see this is also connected to the intercooler. And then there's a hose that runs from the bypass uh, pressure valve back to the turbo inlet. So these are all possible areas where you could have a boost leak. It's nice to know how much boost you're hitting. So if you're not hitting your target boost level, say 15 PSI, let's say it's hitting closer to around seven or eight PSI, then it's likely an issue with your boost controller. And the boost controller is right in here. It's actually this thing right here. All the boost controller is responsible for is telling the wastegate on the turbo when to open. But what happens is that we'll open up a little gate inside the turbo that'll let the air, the extra pressure jump out. If your boost controller is working correctly, it will keep the wastegate closed until you hit target boost. And so if your boost controller is not working at all, what you'll likely see is a maximum boost pressure of around seven or eight PSI. And that's because the wastegate itself has a mechanical spring in there. And without any influence or input from the boost controller, it'll usually go to around seven or eight pounds of boost if that's the, the spring that's in there. And that's, that's usually what's in their stock from, from Subaru.
All right, so hopefully that helps you if maybe it was a boost controller issue or simply just you ha you found a loose hose clamp. If not, um, yeah, I hope the pressure test was helpful too. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it helped you fix your boost leak on your Turbo Subaru. If it was helpful or you liked the video, please consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll see you next time.